So that's good. Probably some people will start, you know, coming in as we um, get started here. But I wanted to go ahead and get started. I don't know how long my lesson is because I didn't time it. Usually I read it and see how long my lesson is going to be. So um, if you want to get your Bibles, we're going to be reading in Psalm 91. And it's just four verses this morning. So Psalm 91. One through four. So whoever gets it and wants to read it, Psalm ninety one. Come on, that's right. Just like the sinner is, 
just like, you know, we're all, we all bleed the same. We all go through different things, but we all go through trouble. Right. Um, you know, we're all born in this world, you know, but the point of this psalm is saying that when we go through trouble, unlike the sinner, God is with us if we abide in him. The psalm is saying, in, you know, in verse 1, it says, abide in God, dwell in God. Dwell in secret place, abide under his shadow, trust in God, live in God. It's, you know, it says, make God your habitation and nothing will harm you. He is the safest place. Um, but what I wanted to pull out, this was, when I, when I read scripture and I really um, study it, I like to look up what words mean. And what it might have been in Hebrew, you know, because I can't read Hebrew, but I can look it up and... You know, right. Google is a great thing. And, you know, when you look up these things and you really study and you go deep in the Word, you might have read the verses over and over, and it's wonderful. You know, what Sister Reaver read this morning, that was a wonderful song, you know, a hope that we have protection. But when you really dig in and you really um, find out the meanings of these things, it really brings it brighter. Um it says, if you're going to be protected in life, you're going to have to dwell on God's character. Now, in verses 1 through 3, when you look at it, God's character is being displayed in his different names. If you look and you read it again, if we, you know, go ahead and look. It says, the first, it says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Right. So that was that first line. In Hebrew, there was a name, if I say it wrong, y'all just excuse me, but it's Elion, meaning that word right there for most high is Elion, meaning the possessor of heaven and earth, the God is who is over all things that are, that are. So in that line, it says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high. You know, the one that possesses heaven and earth. That's what Elion means. So you go on and you read on and it said, and, and Sister Reba read it, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And there, in the Hebrew, it's Shaddai. It's not the Almighty great in strength right there in that first part. It is Almighty who is great in grace. The God who is bountiful in all of our needs, that we shall not need or shall not want or lack because of him. So if you read in that um, Hebrew, that's what the Almighty means in that particular um, spot right there. It's the title of God used like in Genesis. When you, I, I read this and it says in Genesis 17, God called Abraham out of his old land to separate from it and follow him. He didn't know where he was going. He didn't know what he was going to do. He didn't know how God was going to provide. But God called himself as the almighty God. So the God who would provide. So that's just an example. The same, you know, in the same context that the psalm was writing here. So Abraham had no clue how he was going to make it, what he was going to do. But he knew that God was his provider. Um, in, in verse number two, that Sister Reber read, it said, I will say of the Lord. And if you look there, Lord is all capital, all capital letters, L-O-R-D. And when you find that in the Bible in Hebrew, is Yahweh or Jehovah. But what that meant, this was my favorite one. It's the covenant-keeping God, the eternal the eternal, unchangeable I am, the one who was, is, and is to come, or that shall ever be. So when you read, it says, I will say of the Lord. So he is the covenant-keeping God. I'm thankful that I have a covenant-keeping yes, God. Amen. And then when you go on, finally it says, he is my fortress and my God. In Hebrew, it's Elohim, and that means the beginning God, the creator God, the one who created heaven and earth. 
So if you really dig down deep in just those two things, I thought it was kind of fun, so I did this. If it's not good, you know, it blessed my heart. But I took, instead of the names, I rewrote that verse. It's the same thing. It means the same thing. But I just put the meaning there, and I reread that those two verses. Those two verses. And instead of putting Lord or, you know, Almighty, I put the meaning there so you can really see what this psalmist is really saying. And verse number one, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the possessor of heaven and earth, the God who is over all things that are, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty who is great in grace. Hallelujah. The God who is bountiful in all of our needs, that we shall not need and shall not want or lack. Come on, sir. I will say of the Lord, the covenant keeping God, the eternal, unchangeable I am, the one who was, is, and ever shall be. He is my fortress and my in the beginning God. So from the very beginning, he was great in grace. But he was a covenant-keeping God. And when I read that, it blessed my heart because, you know, a a lot of us go through life and they don't see what you're going through at the time. You know, we keep our lives under a hidden, you know, hiding and saying, well, we can't let Sister Eva see what I've been going through this week because if she knows, then she might say something. Or, you know, I'm only going to tell my pastor because, you know, they might think, think of me in some certain way, but I'm thankful for this um, Sunday school lesson this morning. Praise it's so important that we know the very <clears throat> character of God. When we read these things and we read the scripture, the psalmist was trying to show us the character of who God is, and it's important that we see and we, um, if you're going to be protected in life, you're going to have to dwell on his character, the most high God who is above all things, the Almighty who is great in grace and will always provide our needs, the Lord, the eternal God, the covenant-keeping God, the creator. He is the most high. And, and in the psalm, in the midst of all those troubles, in the midst of troubles, because surely they were going through a hard time if they wrote the psalm like they did, in the midst of the troubles, God lifts us most high. He lifts us above these problems to a place where harm cannot reach us. For if you're really, truly dwelling in God, and you're really dwelling on who He is, He's going to keep you above those troubles. In Psalm 121, it said, The Lord, and that then the Lord is all capital. So that means the Lord, the covenant-keeping God, is thy keeper. The Lord, the covenant-keeping God, is thy shade upon thy right hand. So when you're going through hard times and you're struggling throughout the week on what you, you know, the things that you're going through, things that people say to you that may not think that it hurts, or the things that, you know, you go through every day and the devil's on your track all the, all the stinking time. I mean, it's like he's right there every time you move. He's right there in your ear, and he wants to try to do everything he can. But it said, the covenant-keeping God is my keeper. That's a promise that I just hold on to. Because if he's a covenant-keeping God, that means he don't lie. He's going to keep it all the way until the end. So that means he is our keeper. And he is a shade on my right hand. So when all the the things of the life are beating down upon us, he's going to be our shade. And I'm thankful that all I have to do is crawl up underneath him in those troublesome times. God's names in this in these couple of verses, it creates faith in us. It creates confidence in Him. And they ought to lead to dwell and to sit down underneath this great God. You know, in, in the first psalm, the very first psalm, it says, Those who are sit in the seat of the scornful, you know, it's the complete opposite right here. Now we're talking about, you know, sitting underneath God's shadow and abiding in Him. You know, it's a life of communion with God. we got to walk with Him. It's security for the Christians. If, you know, 
um, it's protection in God. So are we really dwelling on the character of God? Are we right, really right. dwelling every day instead of looking at what's going on? Are we really dwelling on who God is? Are we really dwelling on what God can do for us instead of moping around and crying all day and and thinking that you're the worst thing that ever woke up in the morning? I know that sometimes I look in the mirror and I'm like, ugh, you know, you just need to get it together. But God said, are you really dwelling in who I am? And in verse number two and three, it says, I will say of the Lord... And then in verse, or it says in verse number two, I will say of the Lord. And then it says in verse three, surely he shall deliver thee. You know, if you look at that, you know, he had an experience. He says, you know, he went through hard times. Whoever the, whoever wrote the song, I, I wasn't able to find out who really wrote, wrote this. They said three different guys. So I didn't, I wasn't going to pretend like I knew this morning. But the, whoever wrote this, it's, you know, he was going through something, and it says, I'll say of the Lord. And then he had confidence when he talked about who God was and the character of God. It turned into confidence because he said, surely he will deliver me. So it turned into, you know, him trying to convince himself and tell himself who God was. And then it turned into, surely he's going to deliver me. So he had confidence, you know, after he had said who God was. Um, if you're not dwelling on the name of God, the character of God, and you're not sheltering under the tender wings of God, how can you expect to be safe? And verse number four it says the word trust. He said, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. Um. The phrase in verse 4 means to literally hide, to run beneath, or to make refuge in. So when your life gets crazy, what keeps you? Right. When unpredictable things you thought would never, ever happen to you, what keeps you? You know, when troubles you face, hard times at work, hard times at home, people calling you 50 million times. Yeah. You know, the same problems over and over. You wake up in the morning with the same pain. You wake up in the morning with that same lying devil talking to you. What really keeps you? You know? Um, so what keeps what keeps us is our relationship with God. Amen. That's solely what does it. If I don't know how the world manages to do it without him. Right, because come without on. Him, it says, first of all, we have to be saved. You know, Jesus said, Thou killest the prophets and stone them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as the hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and you would not. So if if you're not saved, how can you be expect to face the troubles of life? Right, right. But if you are a child of God, you can be a child of God and not dwell on Him. You can be a child of God and just go through life thinking that you're protected, but you're not really dwelling in who He is in the character. If you're not dwelling on God and you're not being sheltered,